And now, your official Tiger Bait postgame show with Mike Scarborough and Preston Guy starts now. All right, LSU gets it done in Columbia, Missouri. Um, it wasn't pretty, but uh, I tell you what, it's um, what Jaden Daniels continues to do. Uh, it, it, this really borders on folk hero uh, type stuff. LSU folk hero uh, trajectory for him. It, it's um, it's a shame uh, some of these amazing performance by him are so marred by the defense. But look, uh, when you have the issues that LSU has defensively, you'll take them any way you can get them. They survived the Missouri Tigers, who were undefeated coming into this one, 49 to 39. And uh, we saw Oklahoma knock off Texas earlier. Uh, got an eye on Texas A&M and Alabama. We'll give updates during the show. And so, uh, again, another Herculean effort from Jaden Daniels with sore ribs. Uh, we could talk about some of the bad officiating in this football game. Um, but uh, Major Burns, who's been taking a lot of abuse, puts it away for LSU in the end with a pick six. And and uh, seals the deal because, you know, we were we were talking about it in our Tiger Bait the live chat on our Tiger Den Premium Message Board that uh, when LSU scored that uh, yeah your first thought was that there might have been too much time left on the clock and uh, the defense had some stops today and, and they played they played better in the second half and and hopefully this is the the start of um, a, an upward uh, trajectory but still a, a lot of uh, a lot of painful moments that we witnessed today so. Mike Scarborough here, Preston Guy. Preston, what do you think? Well, the we'll, we'll start talking about the defense. The big takeaway is the defense took a baby step forward. They went from historically bad to just very bad or pretty bad. You know, some so we'll see which one of those I would go with after I look at some film. Um, defense gave up 22 points on your first three drives, looking like they were just going to get blasted. That, of course, put LSU at letting scores be allowed on 17 of your last 20 drives that weren't impeded by the game clock. That You never want to be in that position. That being said, the defense took a deep breath. They bunkered down, and for the rest of the game, after giving up 22 on your first three drives, you gave up 17 for the rest of the game, your final 10 drives. So LSU ends the game on a 42 to 17 run to secure a win 49 39. And of course, ironically enough, as much as the defense has struggled, it was the defense who shut out Missouri on technically the final three drives, but, um, Notably, they got the ball back under three minutes down one score LSU forced a three and out. And then next time they get the ball back down, um, uh, three again, and Major Burns gets the colossal pick six. Uh, you know, it was one of the things the defense has been playing so poorly. You're kind of nervous when they have 95 yards to go in 45 seconds. You're like, eh, they, they shouldn't get this, right? Right, <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. Um, the other takeaway, guys, uh, I, I, I refuse to not give Jaden Daniels as much credit as he deserves. He's on a historic run with LSU. If not for Joe Burrow in 2019, this would be the best season we've ever seen from a quarterback. He's got 2,300 yards, 23 total touchdowns to start the year after six games. And that, of course, puts him on historic pace as only a, a handful of players in SEC history have had 45 or more total touchdowns. Of course, you throw in a ball game, he might get in the 50s um, this year. So um, more so than his performance on the field, of course, he had another almost he had a 400 yard game at, at one point, but then he got he, he lost the fumble and went back 11 yards. It's the intangibles. You know, he took a huge killer shot in the ribs on a call that arguably could have been a late hit. And what does he do but turn around and lead not one, but two uh, game lead securing scores where he ran the ball in the first one, huge 42-yard run, great play, and then he does it in the air while rolling out, connects with Malik Neighbors. Incredible game for Jane Daniels. He deserves to be in the Heisman conversation, don't you think, Mike? Absolutely, and uh, like RG3 said in the telecast, who's now uh, – he's starting to inch towards that Gary Danielson um, <laughs> realm of uh, annoying uh, color guys on, on college football broadcast. Um, but, you know, I don't know what Jaden Daniels is uh, – the, the rip situation is, if there's a hairline crack in one of them or whatever it might be, but there's no doubt 
he's popping Advil and he's going to be sore for three days at least. And, um, uh, but man, what, what a performance by him. And, and again, it sure seemed like he threw the ball more than he did. Else you had 533 yards of total offense. He accounted for 259 in the air, 15 to 21 quarterback rating of 222 and rushed for another 130 yards. And like you said, uh, he got, uh, some of them cut, uh, taken back after that, uh, that, uh, fumble, um, but you know he counts. He accounted for basically 400 yards of, of total offense uh, for LSU, and um, uh, LSU needed this one. Uh, Brian Kelly pointed out at the end of the game. What did he say? Uh, four of the first six on the road. Absolutely, it's been a uh, it's an odd uh, football schedule. One we haven't seen like that before, or at least that I can recall. And uh, but you're about to have a run of home games here coming up. And um, uh, again, it, it's when you've got the issues that LSU has, uh, there probably isn't going to be a whole lot of pretty wins. Um, but if that defense can find their way and they can fix them and revol- resolve some things, with the way this offense is performing, um, all you need to do is have that other team make some mistakes offensively um, or have to punt a few more times, uh, and, and, and that's going to be the difference. LSU is going to have to outscore people and have the mindset uh, – let, let's see if uh, we can score 50 points every week. So, by the way, uh, guys, that, go ahead. Okay. All right, that 389 yards we're talking about, guys, he only touched the ball 36 times. That means every time he touched the ball, on average, it's first down. That's what really it, – it, it, the stat line itself didn't shock me so much as what he was mentioning about how they they didn't really put the ball in Jaden's hands too much. They were, you know, they ran the ball 43 times today versus only throwing it 23. They very clearly were used to seeing him get. He very well could probably would have had another 500 yard game, but go ahead, Mike. Just so you guys know, Brian Lazar and Preston will each do a post game story. Brian's typically a premium analysis piece. And typically we don't like to use the same photo for both <laughs> stories at the end of the night. But it, it was a no-brainer. It, it had to be Jaden Daniels for Preston's, Jaden Daniels for Brian Lazar's. And um, um, I had a major burn slotted uh, story for, for Brian's without knowing what he was going to send me. But when he sent his instant analysis, it was, it was basically seven-eighths a story of what a, a, a Herculean effort it was by Jaden Daniels. So it was a no-brainer. Um, please hit the like button if you're enjoying the show. Uh, please spread the word that we're live right now. Share it out to your social media, your Facebook, your Twitter feeds, and uh, text the link out to uh, your fellow LSU buddies um, and so they can tune in and join us. Uh, we ought to have a nice crowd here for the next uh, close to an hour, and uh, we're going to try and get to as many uh, comments as possible. Um, Big Cajonas, Kellis, we got an E for effort, D for dog, and a W for win. Go Tigers. Good after Mike and Preston and fellow Tiger baiters. Glad to have Big Cajonas with us. Uh, He's one of the show's BFFs. Uh, Travis Whitney uh, with some uh, uh, purple and gold and tiger emojis. Uh, Caleb took a win despite the miss holding calls, miss off sides calls, and miss hit, late hit call. Absolutely. I think the team got pissed, he says. Uh, Tom Woods says JD5 is incredible. Travis Whitney, similarly, JD5, our hero. No more JD5 hate for the rest of the season, says Big Cojones Kelly. <laughs> and uh, Fax says Travis Whitney. Um, uh, and Caleb, I've never been the biggest JD fa- f- five fan, but he did good. Reminds me of Jamarcus Russell. Um, again, man, it, it's, um, I think a whole lot of people are going to miss Jaden Daniels when his eligibility is up. Well, Jamarcus um, Russell could not run like Jaden Daniels does. No, no. And he wants to see Dylan Cruz and Trey Morgan play at corner. You know what? As good of a defender as Trey Morgan is, he might not be a bad corner, but I don't I've know. I joked man. on. I've joked on several shows this week that that there's no way there's not several LSU wide receivers sitting on the sideline that haven't said, "Man, put me in. I can do it." You know, because yeah. a lot of them played both ways or played some DB uh, in high school as well as being wide receivers. Yeah, um, wow. They definitely need to play out. By the way, some news on the basketball court: LSU just landed a commitment from the number five point guard in America. Curtis Gibbons, number 33 overall player. So apparently the football team did some work for Matt McMahon today. Yeah, we'll jump on that after we get all our football coverage out of the way today. Um, sure. Halftime score, 17-10 to 10 A&M over Alabama. Hey. Um, Barry Barbier, much improved. Horrible officiating, says Todd Davis. Obviously a holding call, false start. 
much improved defense having installed tanks at nose guard. Like I said, I did think the defensive line looked better today. Um, I agree. And they weren't perfect, uh, but clearly a step forward. Absolutely. Um, Bad man. Mm-hmm. No doubt Carl about Dunn. that. Wolf Wolf got the dogs today. Uh, the D held them to four of 11 on third down. Yeah, that's pretty big. Now, that, that, that's something to think about now that he mentions that. Um, what has been the typical third down ratio for the opponent this season? You know, uh, it's actually not. I, I looked at it like after the Ole Miss game. It's not as bad as the numbers would suggest. You think 706 yards. You're thinking that defense went 13 to 15 on, on third down. But it, I, I bet what's actually bad is some of the, the fourth down conversions. The fourth down has um, been pretty rough. Today, yeah. one for two on fourth down. <laughs> Tim DeSales, our buddy with Koala, who we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show's show. Uh, it was great to see Will and Major give some inspiration to the D in the second half. Absolutely. Uh, they had a b- bit of pride in the second half, says Carl the Cat. Uh, Big Conus Keller playing cover two in the second half helped, and the D-line got pressure. I like it a lot. Al Jubin, where are the haters now? <laughs> um, LSU Tigers on Tiger Den Sports. Um, LSU defense looked horrible once again, but key stops when it mattered. Um, they looked horrible, but did they look historically awful? That's the thing. You just have to take baby steps forward. There's, there's no, there's nothing you could do to make this defense be elite overnight. There's just nothing. N- Nuss Bust Obama says music. Now that's a comment <laughs> that he posts every show, every week. <laughs> Although he went over two today, you know, it, it's funny to me. I think we're so far removed from people pushing for Nussmeyer to get in the game and pull Jaden Daniels out of there. When Nussmeyer got in the game, I didn't see one person excited. Everyone was just like, oh no, Jaden's hurt. Bar smoke and need to figure the center position out. Yeah. That was a it was a weird day. You know, I was shocked to see DJ Chester roll out there as as your next center. Were you were you surprised that it wasn't Marlon Martinez out there as your first center? Yeah. Um, fire three, four, four, nine said RG three is already there. Mike, uh, about my comments earlier about getting in the Danielson territory, uh, <laughs> RG three sucks adds Todd Davis. And then what he gets some, uh, Rallo, Rallo, McDonough, RG three is great. Well, some people like him, I guess. Well, uh, I'll, Matt house still needs to be fired. Yeah. Um, I think he talks too much. Sometimes just, the, the, you know, some silence is actually good. Um, but i tell you one thing. He isn't afraid to uh, say stuff that a lot of color guys aren't afraid to, but uh, some of the stuff he says is the reason why. Um, Fire 3449 says, Mike, your mic is cutting out. Is that true, or, or was that just earlier when we Preston was cross-talking with me? I haven't uh, heard you it. Guys, you guys let me know. Um, this, uh, program, sometimes when two people are talking, we'll, we'll silence one or the other. If it's, uh, both are blasting at the same time. Um, he's saying us would transfer and he's calling, he's sticking with it. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see why. I mean, he's got the keys of the Maserati waiting for him next year. Where, where else is he going to go where he has, as easy of a shot at becoming the starter as LSU next year. Chili asked Mike, uh, they had to take Martinez out of center and put in the freshman shake my head for Martinez. What happened to Turner today? Did, did anybody ever follow up on his, it looks like he got banged up. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. I, I didn't hear anything on that. If, if you heard something in the comments, maybe on Twitter or something, just slap us a comment guys. Um, Preston, you want to go ahead and get out uh, one of our first sponsors? Yeah, sure, guys. If you can see the artwork behind me, you, the artwork behind us is from our sponsor, Specter Sports Art, from artist Jordan Specter. Um, all of this work is available to check out at spectersportsart.com backslash the Bayou. So make sure to go check that out. We'll get the link in the description of this video. 
Um, guys, it's just really good art. It's guaranteed to catch the eyes of any Tiger fan if they walk in your house or check out your man cave. And the little details on these artwork is what's going to really keep their eye. As you can see, things like the Cruz Cruz, he's got the little puzzle piece on his armband, the golden cleats, the, the, the fireworks. These are all just little Easter eggs or references to things that happened to LSU throughout the season. The Joe Burrow smoking a cigar there behind me, that's one of the most popular pieces he's ever sold. You've got Drew Brees, the same. That's a really cool one. Lots of little little uh, hidden details in that one. You can see the water in the city there. That's representing you know how New Orleans was flooded when he got there. It tells a really good story. Uh, what I always find cool about these artworks is these athletes buy this artwork themselves and hang it in their room. So Dylan Cruz, his parents bought the thing behind us. It's in Dylan's man cave. Joe Burrow's parents. Every time they do a podcast or a story or whatever, they have that piece hanging right behind them in their living room. So that's always what I found to be the coolest part. You can check out all the Louisiana pieces he's got, spectersportsart.com backslash the bayou. Artwork is available in quality print and canvases. So we've got like the quality print Tiger Stadium behind me or the canvas like the cruise behind me. Uh, to, so you got any size, any style to fit your room and your budget uh, all art is out of the box, ready to hang on the wall, all the materials you need in the box. So make sure to visit the link in the description of this video and use the promo code TIGERBAIT10 at checkout for 10% off your first order. Not only will you save 10%, you let our sponsors know that their sponsorship dollars are being put to good use, effectively supporting the Tiger Bait post-game show. There you go. Um Chili, I'm calling it now. Either Corey Raymond will be back or another DB's coach because Steeples will be gone. Um, I'm not sure who. I, I think there's going to be some shakeup on the defensive staff. Um, I don't know who it's going to be. I think it's just because we don't know what uh, the future is for Jimmy Lindsay. Again, keep him and Greg Brooks in your thoughts and prayers. And uh, that victory fund at LSU – Look into that and see if you can help uh, Greg Brooks with with uh, his all the medical bills that he's going to incur coming up here. Um, Jeremy Franks, it would be funny if Alabama loses to AM. That means they would be 0 and 2 against Texas teams, just like it was in 2007 against Louisiana teams. And BK needs to get, go get Will Muschamp or Corey Raymond. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm amazing myself because both times this season, I've I will never pull for Alabama in anything. And um, I've wanted <laughs> Alabama to beat Texas, and I want Alabama to beat AM. It's uh, Longhorn fans and their arrogance, and the Aggie fans and their, um, uh, there's something else uh, with their delusion about uh, really where their uh, program sits in, in college football history. Um, so there you go. I'll tell you what, it makes oh. a statement about where Alabama's football program is. I'll, I'll say this. Missouri was a matchup nightmare coming into this game. I knew it was going to be Brady Cook was cooking, Luther Burden. We knew what he did. Um, you know, and, and Brady Cook, he, he hung 395 on you today. Now, you forced two interceptions on him. That's great. Uh, Luther Burden looks like he, in the first half, he looked like he was about to just absolutely annihilate this defense. They contained him in the second half. So good job on LSU. Um, but moving forward, you're not going to see these just evasive, uh, you know, pass-happy quarterbacks like Brady Cook, like K.J. Jefferson, um, you know, like Jackson Dart. You're, you're going to get guys who either aren't as polished of a passer or a little stiffer, like Mac Johnson, and, and, and like who's the guy for Alabama I'm forgetting, the guy who likes to run a bunch, uh, Jalen Milrow, right? So who's not as effective as a downfield passer. So the matchups for LSU get better starting next week against Auburn, but Auburn does run this RPO system that will be hard to stop. I'm more worried about your outside contain rather than Auburn being able to target you downfield like LSU gives up. I mean, if I'm an offense, I, I really want to develop my downfield passing game because the coverage is just – it continues to struggle. Although it took a step forward this week, continues to struggle. Um, 
two or three not good as one. If Colin is considered to start next season, I believe Nuss. No, Colin is not going to start next year. Nussmeyer is the guy. Um, Hurley's going to need time to develop. Uh, Ricky Collins will be a redshirt freshman. Um, I do have, have maintained, though, for quite a while that LSU needs to go in the transfer portal and get another quarterback. Colin um, Hurley is a year younger than everybody else in this class. <clears throat> Colin, I've talked to him about this specifically before. He knew that he was going to need some time to develop when he gets to college, and he figured, why not get that development started early? So I don't think this is one of those things where Colin Hurley is going to be in a position to beat out Ricky Collins or um, uh, Nuss Meyer next year. Uh, they might go for a savvy veteran backup uh, in the transfer portal, although I contend that those are harder to find than you think uh, if they don't have a realistic shot of beating out the guy for the starting job. But we'll see what they do. It's Preston's microphone that cuts out. He, it just happened twice. So, Oh, really? Um yeah, well, I think that our, setting you're off. using a you're using a USB mic, so I, it might be the cable. Um, I know that thing's got an on off button on or a mute button. That it does, funny. but uh, I don't think that's what it is. It does have an on off button that screws up every once in a while. But I apologize. Yeah. I turned a setting off that sometimes might affect my my mic level. So y'all, let me know if that keeps up. Yeah, uh, Turner's ankle, and they had to pull Martinez. Um, Carvis Durr Martinez had a bad snap on the play. Jaden got hurt. Had bad snap snap when Nuss was in there. Yeah, another um, bad snap at the very end of the game, causing that eleven yard loss. You, you almost bad snapped your way into an L at the very end. That was the worst one. Andy Whitaker, you can't lose Matt House. Need new secondary coaches, not Corey Raymond. Um, and you need uh, new secondary players. Uh. I'd, you absolutely almost an into, a total rebuild is needed back there. And then some of your freshmen need to develop in a hurry. But Mike, don't um, you think there's enough talent in this secondary to at least be approaching average? I mean, you can talk about lack of talent on DB field. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I definitely think they're more talented than what they're showing. I mean, you've got a quarterback who just hung 400 yards on me. You, you tell me there's not enough talent. Well, on this team uh, to, have, to hold them under 400? I do believe that while it's not typical LSU defensive backfield talent that we've used to seeing for the last two decades, uh, nowhere near that, it's not as bad as uh, 706 yards and so forth that we've seen multiple times this season. Um, and, look, when you hire defensive back coaches, there's a fine line behind hiring guys who are known for being recruiters and guys who can also coach the position. And so there is a Jim's and Joe's aspect to this. Um, but um, I think a lot of it starts up front. Um, you know, look, look at a little bit more of the success that maybe the DBs had today because the pass rush was better and the defensive line was better. So if, if that trend can continue a, a little bit, because that Missouri offense is a very, very good offense. Uh, they're playing at home, packed house, one of the better crowds they'll they, they'll ever have up there. Yeah, and, and um, it, it it was it was a really a, a a nice effort, and you know, who knows where that defense might be playing in two or three weeks. Um, the main thing you, you want to get them to is is where they're all playing to the to the best of their ability, and uh, maybe there's a little bit left there that they haven't reached yet. So, and let, let's take a minute to not minimize this victory. I mean, this was a five and zero Missouri team. This was the most excited their program has been in a long time. This was their Super Bowl today, and you went in and got a 10-point victory. So good job, Tigers, overall on that. Ed Orgeron burned the place down on his way out, taking all the transfers as a plug-and-play for DBs. Just to feel a competitive team isn't a recipe for success. Absolutely. Thank Ed and his lady friends for this. Oh, boy. Um, Big conversation. Yeah, it, it's – um. Look, they've been able they, they were able to mask uh some real deficiencies last year. And of course, um you get that big win over Alabama, and maybe that was a little bit of fool's gold uh in the offseason for the uh, out expectations, guys like me staying eleven and one. But um I think 
we knew the DBs would struggle, not this bad. I think the bigger disappointment for me so far this season up until today has been how bad the defensive front's been. I agree with you um, on that. Savion Jones, big disappointment this year. I thought he was due for a monster year. Mason Smith, big disappointment. And guys, let's let's not forget, Brian Kelly artificially raised the bar with how well he put together a team last year. Okay, let's look at the bigger picture real quick and zoom out when talking about Brian Kelly. Let's rewind to December of 2021. You've got 39 healthy players on your roster. You just got absolutely clobber smacked in the bowl game. Brian Kelly takes over. If I'm sitting there and I tell you in your first, let's see, 20 games, you're going to go 14 and six. Based on that six and seven team with 39 scholarship players, do you take that, right, Mike? 14 and six, yeah. first 20 games. You take that every time. Are you kidding me? Um, so the overall performance of Brian Kelly has still exceeded the expectations at this point, even though it's been a little disappointing this year. Just put things in perspective, guys. Um, all right. Uh, get the, can you run through some, uh, some of those uh, comments, Preston, for me? Yeah, sure. Well, well, of course, we got to start with Spectrum Spectrum Well Care here with a nice perspective, Preston. Thanks. That's what I'm here for. Um, let's see here. Crying Belly. This is one of the best Brian Kelly wins I've seen. This season might be his best coaching job. Honestly, you can tell they addressed a lot of issues from the Ole Miss game. Crying, I, I appreciate the optimism. Um there's still a lot of glaring issues. I'm not sure I'm going to call this his best coaching job. I mean, bear in mind, this is a guy who's made the playoff twice in the national championship another time. Um, I, if he turns this around and wins out the rest of his schedule, I'm right there with you. Um, but uh, you got to do that first. Uh, and, and you are right. He did inherit a dumpster fire. And I think overall, uh, I'm going to step back from amazing and say he's 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 outperforming expectations. Um Let's see, Dwayne D. Now, this is a comment. Now, I, I think before I go over into this comment, one of the problems with LSU is the roster was so decimated that you had to start this cycle of transfer portal to build your program and win now, right? The long-term goal is to build through recruiting, right? And, of course, because you got a bunch of one-and-done guys last year, you got to replace those one and done guys. And because his first recruiting class, I believe they only signed 15 or 16 guys in year one. Then you get one recruiting class last year. You know, it just took a little time to, to bring players in and develop them. And of course, part of the problem is when you're doing that one and done cycle, uh, transfers are, are hit and miss, man. Sometimes you get, you know, a great one, like a Joe Burrow. And then, uh, sometimes you get a, a guy who can't play the way you need him to. So last year were veteran plug and play transfers that actually played in competitively in former stops. LSU wasn't so lucky to get top notch guys transferring to LSU. That's a good point. Uh, you bring up Jarek Bernard Converse, who was a really good corner for Oklahoma State. The type of DBs you're replacing them with, you got Zy Alexander, who was all Southland, very good for Southeastern, <clears throat> but. You know, Southeastern and Oklahoma State are hardly the same caliber of of teams that you're playing for. And then think about Deuce Chestnut, who's even Syracuse was a step down from Oklahoma State. Uh, Andre Sam coming from Marshall. Uh, you, you had a lot of guys stepping up in play. And, you know, quite frankly, there's been an adjustment. And sometimes there's a reason these guys were signing with FCS schools, not SEC schools out of high school, because they didn't quite have um, – didn't quite have the luster. Now, where I disagree with you is, is on Omar Spates, who had 100-plus tackles with Oregon State last year. He's been a bit of a disappointment, although I know he's dealing with an injury. I want to say that he's dealt with that hip flexor injury all season long, and that's what's slowed him down all year. But we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Preston, there was a poll on channel call power something LSU. The poll was who would win in a fight, you or that channel host? Come on as a favorite to win. Um, okay, I'll take them on. I'll do it for you. <clears throat> What's up, Preston? Just got here. I love the way we responded after 
being down 22 to seven, finished on a 42 17 run, looked ugly at times, but I saw more effort and tenacity. And, and look, that's a very good point. That's kind of how I opened the show up, Riley. Thanks for commenting. Riley's a former teammate of mine, by the way. Um, I, I love that LSU bounced back from adversity once again. Uh, LSU's done that a number of times under Brian Kelly. I think that that's a testament to him as a coach that his teams will go out with slow starts and he keeps their composure together, keeps their head in the game, and they come back and win these games where you're down multiple scores. Um, and I did see more tenacity effort, better tackling today. Wasn't great. Like I said, no, nothing. I'm, I'm using a comparative skill uh, uh, um, when I'm talking about comparative scale. When I'm talking about this defense, I'm comparing them to what they did last week, right? Which was terrible or just straight up awful at times. Effort was better. I saw a little bit of loafing around. Nothing that was just glaringly terrible. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more effort, a little bit more, but take your baby steps forward. If you can just iron out like tackling and loafing and lack of effort plays alone, if you could fix that, I think you'd have a defense that's pretty close to average, which we've seen this, this offense is national championship caliber. If the offense can just be average, this team has a chance to win every game that's in front of them. Let's see here. Dwayne D, 711 yards last week, 511 this week. Still a long ways to go, but an improvement on at all on defense will go to a huge step with all home games left except for Bama. That's a very good point, Dwayne. Um, yeah, 711. That, that was bad. 527 today is what they gave up. Also bad. Just keep on working. Keep on improving. You get And you know what? You made plays when they mattered. Last week against Ole Miss, you pinned them deep, uh, eight, uh, 88 yards back on their own 12 with I think it was a minute and a half to play, and you felt there was zero chance you get a stop there. Today they had still three drives. Still up? had a running back over. Still had a running back over 100 yards though in Schrader. But um, yeah, you got to work on that. Bad, what what nearly as bad as last week? Baby steps. Just play good enough. The good news is for this defense, you're never going to have to be elite. Jaden Daniels is absolutely taking care of business. 49 points again. I believe this offense is averaging in the 40s points this year. <clears throat> That's going to get the job done. You just hope you don't run into a buzzsaw of a defense one day and you're relying on those guys to make stops because that, that might get out of hand. Let's hear from Kenneth P. Haynes. Kenny Haynes is a proud 1989 graduate of LSU Law School with a passion for justice. Kenny stands out as the only lawyer in the state, board certified in both appellate practice and family law. Drawing from 34 years of trial experience, Kenny has navigated the most complex aspects of real people's lives. If you need help in Northwest Louisiana with a family issue, legal issue, or a highly skilled trial attorney, call Kenny, 318-222-2100. And speaking of winning, Kenny would like to recognize our 2023 national champions and congratulate coaches Kim Mulkey and Jay Johnson. Go Tigers! And of course, Kenny is the unofficial official lawyer of TigerBait.com. He's always there on our message board uh, to give us uh, all the legalese when there's uh, legal matters involving LSU football and athletics. And uh, he reserves the right to think most clearly for a paying client. Nobody better than Kenneth P. Haynes. You need any legal work in North Louisiana, he is your guy. And uh, I've known him for multiple decades and a, and a great friend and one of our best posters on our Tiger Den premium message board. Um, Mike, I, right, I, uh, I see a comment I want to throw up. Can I, can I go, go ahead and throw it up? All right. I want to talk big cojones, Kellis, because this touches on – the one note that I've got written down for the show that I haven't touched on <clears throat> speaking of how bad the officiating was, how does a DB get an excessive clapping penalty, which is, I think that's a new penalty they put in like mid season this year. Uh, and will Campbell get an excessive blocking penalty. He's of course making a blind side reference with that. The penalties today were strange. Of course you had 22 overall penalties, each team with 11 penalties each. And the clapping, I don't mind that as a call. Um, I, I do think they need to use some discretion as to whether or not it's a linebacker trying to get a, the ball to snap falsely, or if it's a DB who's just clapping back there 
because I just don't I don't think banning the defense from clapping is just very realistic considering how much energy those guys play with. That being said, there was a series of penalties and questionable calls and no call that I I, I I think as LSU fans, you should be absolutely livid about those two red zone trips back to back where um, on first down and goal, Missouri has a clear false start. Easy to see. The whole defense sees it. The defensive line stands up and points in an effort to get the call. And then the the refs, I think they kind of saw it, but weren't sure. They let the play go on. Meanwhile, your defensive line is standing up, gets blown up and gives up the touchdown unacceptable to miss a clear for false start like that. You should have backed them up five yards and instead you're dealing with a touchdown and a Missouri lead. Fast forward to the next drive. LSU's on the one or two, something like that. Jaden Daniels takes a run out left side and they call a very ticky tack holding on Bryce Keith and Mouton. Very ticky tack. I mean, maybe a tiny little bit of Jersey, but that's one of those things that's backside. You got to let that fly, man. And then arguably, and it, it's a close call, but if you're going to call that holding, I think you definitely got to call the late hit on Jaden. It's close. It's cl- I, I could see why you would go either way as a ref, but to have all three of those calls um, that could have gone LSU's way, all three go against LSU and cause LSU. I mean, essentially we're talking about a 14 point swing. I mean, they might have scored on the next few downs, but you back them up five yards, that's a lot less likely. And, of course, Jaden did score. We're talking about possibly a 14-point swing that that killed LSU on back-to-back drives. I think as an LSU fan, you should be living. Mike, am, am I exacerbating the frustration here, or what do you think about that? No, nah, I mean, I, I get a lot of what you're saying, but um, there, 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 there's a lot of parts of that as well. Um. Go ahead and get, uh, uh, put it, get, get us some another comments. one up here. Yeah, gotcha. Let's see here. Oh, I like a Bama score update. Bama and Texas we 8 and 4 all tied up at 17. So hard to watch these A&M cheerleaders. That's it, du- That's it Dwayne. That's part of the reason why I, I, I'm, I find myself pulling for Alabama over A&M. The cult? Um, Is Texas A&M a cult? Yeah, because here's the thing. Texas A&M beats Alabama, and they think they've arrived. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, and more importantly, maybe the recruits think they've arrived. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know that that's good for LSU with uh, Oklahoma and Texas coming to the league next year. Um, you want a to kind of stay where they've been and not make a move. It almost benefits um, LSU to have uh, Alabama win this game. That's what I'm saying. Um, I, I think regardless of how, uh, Alabama gets it done the rest of the way. Uh, Nick Saban might be making, uh, having some serious thoughts about uh, whether he takes it to the house or or how much longer he's going to want to go. Um, I think he's going to have that whether he ends up ten and two, nine and three, or or, or eleven and one. I think he's going to continue to have that. Carvis uh, Durr with a comment here. Swinson was clearly held on one of Brady Cook's run. It was a third down. I remember that. It was like badly held and the camera got a good shot of it and uh, that was a good 25 run yard run from brady cook and they missed that one so yeah the officiating today not a big fan of it that being said do keep in mind um i cover lsu mike covers lsu y'all are all lsu fans So you're going to see a lot of officiating through the lens of the LSU scope. And there's going to be calls that, um, you know, go in LSU's favor that are maybe questionable that you're overlooking because, you know, you're just excited to get to the next play. But the other team is sitting there like with their hands up. But um, I did notice a lot that that I think you should be upset with the refs about today. Um, Mike, you want to get to another comment? No, I want to get to Koala. Tim DeSales was here earlier on the show. And, um, again, fantastic uh, bin- uh, business that he's got running there with a koala. Uh, the team of koala right here of, of Koala Baton Rouge are your residential and commercial energy efficiency experts. The approaches koala provides not only help you reduce energy bills and maintain a more comfortable living environment, but can also help reduce airborne allergens, water condensation issues, wear and tear on your HVAC system, and even lengthen the life of your roof shingles. The koala team 
provides existing homeowners with the doctor's diagnosis of your home's energy efficiency and can offer several strategies to help you stay more comfortable and save money on energy bills all year long. Koala has the capacity to tackle large spray foam projects and new home construction while being available to help everyday homeowners get some relief from South Louisiana's extreme weather. As an added bonus, most of Koala's projects qualify for federal income tax credits. So give Koala a call today and tell them you heard about them on Tiger Bait. Call them at 225-457-1001. Tell them you heard about them on Tiger Bait, and they're going to give you 7% off on your project. And so call them again at that 457-1001 number for your free energy efficiency assessment. Uh, nobody does it better than Koala Insulation, and I can vouch for them. Uh, Tim DeSells and his group are, are, are second to none. Uh, go ahead and put something up. Uh, get You see something you want? Uh, I wasn't looking, but let me find something here. Uh, guys, if y'all got a really good comment you want to put out there, we're going to try to get some comments here. But as here we you go. see, there's just a ton of them today. Don't forget to do, leave a super chat. Crime Belly, uh, this is one of the best Brian Kelly wins I've seen this season. Might be his best coaching job. Honestly, you can tell they address a lot of issues from the old Miss game. Yeah, we went through this one earlier in the show. Um, I think it was a it was a, a good win, no doubt. But I don't know about the best. Uh, that's yeah, a very strong praise. But it was a it was good job to bounce back and get that win. <clears throat> yeah, so they they called. Uh, Campbell for blocking the defender out of bounds. Um, I didn't see it, so I can't comment as to the validity or anything of that. Um, but that, I can't, I can't help but think of the the Michael Orr call for the Blind Side movie: <laughs> excessive blocking. Refs were Blind awful on both sides. Completely took the flow out of the game. Horrible. The boot well, was missed no the um, you know the uh, false start. Um, you know, I, I, I thought, uh, they probably could have gotten Mason Smith for, um, the face mask. Um, although oh, they I would missed like to that see one, another, yeah. you know, the Mason Smith missed face mask. So that was on the heels of blowing a bunch of LSU calls. I saw that one. And I was like, I think that's the refs giving them a make good call. Like they're, they're trying to make good on blowing that false start and missing the late hit on Jaden and, calling a terrible, you know, holding call on a touchdown where they ended up getting zero points on that drive. By the way, that red zone drive uh, where Jaden got hurt, complete implosion in the red zone, complete and total disaster. Not Nussmeyer's fault with a bunch of other stuff going wrong, but just about everything went wrong. Fearless Fruge, Texas a m isn't a cult. They do appreciate their gas station attendance, though. Have them in parade on field. Um, uh, I would like to know if you're going to say there's a SEC fan base that's like a cult, that there would be one that you would list ahead of Texas A&M. Uh, I mean, they're all a little culty. I mean, aren't we all kind of a little bit culty with our love of football? I, the Gator fans can be a little. A&M bit. is crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, all right. Had somebody Would you say we match up better with Auburn? Oh. Um, I'm not sure. Uh oh, look who you got. I had an invader um, come in my studio. What you doing? I can't believe I can't believe how big. Um, uh, what a big boy. Say hey, Peyton. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, breaking down Auburn, and we're gonna have a little bit of extra coverage next week for that one. And um, yeah, um, I do think uh. LSU's got a real chance to uh, probably uh, assert themselves uh, with a, a home game next week. It'll either be a 6 or a 6.30 uh, kickoff on that one. We'll find out Monday morning or maybe even tomorrow. Um, I don't know that that's one they have to wait until Monday to, to let you know. I think we might know pretty soon uh, on whether it's 6 or 6.30, but either way, it's a night game. And um, I do think LSU has a chance to uh, – probably uh, put it all together as much as possible in, in that one. But um, look, man, Auburn gave Alabama, uh, gave Georgia all they wanted last week. And so we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> I think the short answer is yes. LSU absolutely has a better matchup against Auburn than uh, 
technically anybody. The baby just threw my mic at my uh, my computer. Guys, if you're enjoying the show, please hit that like button. Uh, please also share. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button notification bell. We've already got post-game video up on our YouTube channel for you to look at after the show. Uh, we've got Brian Kelly up and Eli Drinkwitz. Uh, both their uh, post-game videos are up on our channel. And uh, Preston and Brian's uh, post-game stories are also up on TigerBait.com. As always, if you're not a subscriber to TigerBait, go over there and subscribe for $1. And um, you can try us out for a week. You're getting our text alerts and, and all our premium content. Uh, my boy Tyler was uh, at uh, Westgate at Turlings last night. Um, so we're going to have uh, some video of uh, LSU's uh, defensive tackle commitment, Johnson. So be on the lookout for that in the next couple of days. Uh, we've got a full interview with him and and much more uh, from the coverage of that one. And um, we'll have that for you on Tiger Bait. Um, get out to vote before the game next week, says Carl Dunn. Uh, Auburn and Army will run the football. Uh, Bart Smokey Auburn has good defense but cannot throw. Um, yes, that's uh, that's true. Um, and Mark Humby, I guess Texas is it back. I enjoyed that. To today. <laughs> well, Oklahoma might be back, though. That's all right. Um, I think they're both uh, – I'm going to be real curious to see how that plays out next year. Um Should but they're, 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 they they could be they could be heading for a rematch in the Big 12 championship game. Those two. Um it's true. All right, guys. Yeah, Texas did lose. Um Dwayne D, my daughters and son in laws are flying in from Cali to the Auburn game. LSU better handle business. Um I'm picking LSU in that one. Yeah, I think I know there was, I was I, I know there was a lot of people picking Missouri today. Um a lot of LSU media were uh more more than normal. Um Preston, if you had to uh give a uh game ball on the defensive side, is the, is it most obvious that it would be major burns for the pick six or is it something else? <sighs> Harold Perkins played pretty well. Um I don't uh, I would either go Major Burns or Harold. I mean, Harold, Major Burns still had a lot of issues in coverage today. Um, so I might go Harold Perkins if you made me go on the defensive end. Uh, I'll tell you what, the good news for this defense, moving forward, you look at this schedule, and who are the quarterbacks who are really going to be able to target you downfield? Auburn next week, is Peyton Thorne really that guy? I don't think so, although the outside run contained for the RPOs are going to be troubled. And you play Army, who doesn't pass the ball at all, and – you should comfortably win that. Alabama with Jalen Milrow, I like the matchup, even though Alabama might be a better overall team. I like that matchup a lot. Florida, I mean, obviously, y'all know I'm not a believer in Florida whatsoever. Georgia State and then Texas A&M with Max Johnson, who can throw around, but he's a bit of a stiff passer. I think LSU's pass rush will impact him. The problem, the pass rush gets after you but won't put you on the ground. It's guys who can be elusive and buy a little bit of time and still be accurate. Max Johnson's a guy, if you get after him, you're going to make him inaccurate as a passer. 23-17 uh, Alabama over a and They just scored with 20 seconds left waiting for a word on the extra point. The extra point is good. So um, 24-17. And so uh, – 22 seconds left in the third period on that one. And um, Florida State looks like they're doing okay with Virginia Tech, 29-17. So, big one tonight, point, Georgia and Kentucky. I'm I, I'm curious about that Kentucky-Georgia game. That, that one could be more interesting than people think. It definitely will be because I think Georgia's offense is having some trouble. I do think Georgia ultimately takes care of business, but I think it'll be a fun game. My point I'm making on the schedule, guys, is when it comes to the matchup nightmare for LSU's defense – the worst is behind you. Brady Cook, Jackson Dart, KJ Jefferson, and Jordan Travis at Florida State. Those are the four worst matchups for this defense. The worst is behind you. I expect that LSU's defense will improve as the level of competition it gets from the offense as it plays against will, will get worse. So I'm not writing LSU off. A lot of people have said 75, 8, and 4. 
Um, I still think LSU has every chance to win out with obviously the big tough one being at Alabama. And then you mix in that uh, are the rest of the games at LSU this year. Yeah. Five home games this year. And then you got to go to Tuscaloosa. LSU is very much still alive to win the West and possibly, um, you know, uh, go back to Atlanta, finish 10 and two, just saying, not, not making that official prediction. They probably do trip up one more time, but the, the chance is there. Let's hear from Brittany, Brittany at uh, Drip IV. Hi, everybody. We're so excited to share the news that both our Lafayette and our Baton Rouge location are offering some blue tie for weight loss. If you or someone you know are interested in our medically assisted weight loss program with some blue tie, call Kylie and Lafayette or myself in Baton Rouge. We'd love to speak with you. Absolutely. Uh, right there uh, in Perkins Crossing, Perkins in Essen, near Iverstein Farms and Sushiyama. Um, guys, uh, I, I keep saying it. I've got a lot of friends that have been doing semaglutide. Uh, you know the trade name. It starts with O. I'm not going to say it. But uh, this is the legit stuff. And um, the the weight is falling off of people that are going this route. And um uh, in clinic injections are a hundred dollars a week. If you if you're able to give yourself the injections, it's eighty five a week. Give them a call at two two five two five six three six three four to book your consultation, or in Lafayette at three three seven three four seven six six five five. And so drip IV for uh, if you're dehydrated, uh, semaglutide. They got other aesthetic uh, services there. Um, they've got it all for you. Drip IV uh, with a great location. Uh, right there uh, on Perkins Road, and um, fantastic, uh, Brittany. And by the way, starting next week, they're going to be open on weekends, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so uh, I think they're going to be doing a ton of business on Sunday with a night game on Saturday night with Auburn coming to town. If you're not, if you're uh, feeling a little hungover, uh, go over to see Drip IV next Sunday morning. Um, All right, let's get back to it. Um, Hold let's up, get I got to some of your comments here. Go let's ahead. See. First off, everybody hit the like. Thank you, American Patriot. Did he change his icon from the little the blue stripe flag? I think it's the same American Patriot. Um, looks, like, looks like Benji. Yeah. The dog looks like Benji. <laughs> Does look like Benji. Uh, Brian Russell. So what if Dave Aranda gets fired? Would Brian Kelly bring him back in? I mean, if Dave Aranda gets fired this year, I think, you know, you throw the bank to get him back, right? I mean, that's an elite no, coordinator. No, I mean, really? I, I don't think I don't think Matt House is going anywhere unless he were to miraculously get a head coaching job somewhere. Um, well, that's not. I don't, I don't think there's going to be. I don't think there's going to be any move on LSU's defensive coordinator. I mean, if he if it doesn't continue to improve, uh, someone joked about we went from seven eleven to five eleven. Next week we'll go to three eleven and then one eleven. If they continue to improve, but I mean, Mike. If if they don't take, if they continue to give up 500 yards per game, you really think they retain him? How can you retain a coach who who gives up 500 yards per game? I do. I do believe that he would retain him. Wow. Yep. Uh, here you go, Texas Tiger. Ma uh, Max is limping hard at the end of the of quarter Oof. three. Yeah, that that's that. really that's really uh, a a bad deal for them because uh, behind Max. Um, that, that, that could be your season. Uh, he, he's been taking some hits the yeah. last few weeks. And I hate um, to hear that. You know, a lot of people don't like him because he transferred and left LSU high and dry for the bowl game. But I got to say, between him, his father, and even Jake Johnson a little bit, I got, you know, I've interviewed and talked to all three of them a good bit. They were all super people. Backs, good, great people, super. you know. Yep. So um, just the way things that. ended with Orgeron and the transition to Kelly, uh, they just felt they, they needed to. It's a business no decision, and I, I understood and respected it. Yep. Um, Mark Cumbie, Max is injury prone. Um, Chance Babin, why are LSU fans so obsessed with bringing back old coaches? Be original people. I will say this, Chance, if if there is uh, changes, which I believe there is going to be, um, I'm not one of those guys that, uh, oh, you're, you're bringing a coach from the north and all that stuff. But I will say for some of the positions that I think they could make some changes, I, I do think there needs to be some more coaches with um, a pretty good uh, resume of, of 
coaching and recruiting in, in the SEC um, and in the, in the SEC geography. Um, you know, and it's funny for LSU too. You know, I, I also do wonder, Bob Diaco is sitting there on LSU staff. He's currently coordinating special teams. I mean, y'all know he was the defensive coordinator for Brian Kelly the year they went to the championship in 2012. I just wonder, like, you know, how much input is he allowed? I mean, he won the Broyles Award that year. How much? How much input? Uh, Russell. Do have? So, Mike, you were saying that Kelly would base his career at LSU on Madhouse and his defense. Really explain that to me. Yeah, I'll explain it to you. I, I think they've got a real problem with um, personnel. I think the Jimmy Lindsay uh, help uh, issue that took place at the end of July, early August, was uh, really uh, set them back. Um, I think him saying I should have done it sooner this week when it was obvious to everybody in the first week of August that uh, defensive line was not Jancic's uh, position. And to say it, um, you know, oh, wow. the, first week of Oct- uh, the first week of October, uh, it, it, say that out loud. Uh, you know, um, th- there's just – when you look across the board and you say, if you go position by position of the 11 that you put on the field on the defense and you say which of these guys are – First team all SEC, second team all SEC. Not what you think they might be in the preseason, but after what after you see them perform this year, what is LSU going to place on those lists? I can see Whit Weeks on an all freshman team. Harold Perkins will be somewhere. Um, does Wingo have the same uh ending uh and postseason accolades that he had last year? I don't think so. Savion Jones doesn't uh, hasn't done what we thought he would be would do, and I think a lot of this part of it is coaching. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you don't go on the portal and take a bunch of kids from S- FCS schools, et cetera, and think yep. that you're going to go into the SEC uh, and, and be an elite program, particularly if you're defensive front and you're not getting rushed off the edge. And it's just been a domino effect there. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Obviously, a lot of you guys disagree. But we'll see. Stu Guess, cool. No way House will be at LSU next year. Pete Jenkins thinks very highly of Matt House. Kelly won't go down with a burning sh- with the, with a burning ship. This isn't all on House. No, there's there's a lot of issue issues there. And guys, I really um, do want to emphasize with these defensive issues. I don't think it's necessarily the scheme that they're calling. I, I think the plays Matt House are calling are actually very creative. They're fine. It's the execution of the players on this. I mean, yeah, guys in coverage, but if you've got a, if you're calling a guy to cover man on man, right, and he just doesn't cover the man, is there anything about your play calling you can really do? It's really about getting these players to execute the way you need them to to run that defense. I mean, I, I don't think Matt House forgot how to play calls overnight, but that being said, I mean, if you're giving up on average 500, 600 yards a game, I mean, something's got to give. So I, I do think Madhouse will be coaching for his job down the stretch, but um, I, I don't think it's a done deal either way. Yeah. We'll see. Um, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? No, nah, I'm good, guys. You know, come see me Monday night. We'll have Zach Nagy returning at our normal time, 8 p.m. We'll be talking about – uh, Auburn and I'll find something to review on the film. Uh, it'll be interesting. Maybe, maybe I look at the defense again, or, or maybe I just do a, a Jaden Daniels appreciation night. We'll see. All right, guys. Thanks you all for tuning in. Buddy and I will be back here Wednesday night, eight o'clock. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff on our YouTube channel. Again, Brian Kelly and Eli Drinkwitz post games are up and uh, we've got all our post game content posted on tigerbait.com. And we're going to be on the message boards. And uh, about to jump on that basketball commitment that broke right when we uh, were going live. So uh, good for Matt McMahon uh, getting another uh, uh, commitment. Um, and, um, man, basketball season going to be here before you know it. So, all right, guys, y'all have a great weekend. And uh, real positive for LSU getting that win in Missouri. And uh, I think everybody's going to have a better attitude going into this week than, than last week. Um, hit the like button if you haven't already. And uh, subscribe, notification bell. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you.